Hello, and welcome to DIY Boba Tea with the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, where we're making tapioca pearls for our own bubble tea. If you picked up a kit, you should have a bag of tapioca starch, a bag of brown sugar, a large straw, a packet of tea mix. You'll also need some kind of heating element, a knife, a heat safe spoon, a clean and open working space like a countertop or a cutting board, a bowl, a pot, and a measuring cup. To get started, set your pot up on a heating element or stove and add a fourth of a cup of water to the pot. Now you're going to take your bag of brown sugar and kind of feel it out and divide it into half and then again one section in half. You want to put about three fourths of your bag of sugar into the water in your pot. But make sure you're saving that last little bit. Now you'll turn the heat up. and stir your sugar until it is fully dissolved into the water. While we're stirring for a million years, a one thing to note is that the sugar used in this kit is just regular light brown sugar, so it's going to be sweeter and not as darkly colored as kind of traditional tapioca or bubble tea sugar, which is generally uh, an unrefined, very dark brown sugar. Aside from the additional sweetness, you'll notice that when you cook your tapioca pearls, they will be significantly lighter than the ones that you usually see in bubble tea if you get it at a store or a shop. Once your sugar is fully dissolved, you're going to let this mixture come to a full boil. Once your mixture is well boiling, you're gonna take your bag of tapioca and subdivide it in about half. You want a little bit less than half of the tapioca starch that you have in that bag. And you're gonna add that slightly less than half to your boiling liquid. And you're gonna stir it together really well until there are no more big clumps of tapioca starch. It's gonna be a weird texture and it's gonna start sounding very strange and kind of shrieky, but that's okay. That's what we're looking for. Once everything is fully mixed together and you don't see any more big white clumps, you're gonna turn off the heat and take your pot away from the heating element, or in my case, move the heating element. Now you're going to mix in more tapioca powder. You do want to save out some, so I would say at least two thirds of what you've got left in your bag. Put it in the pot and stir and stir and stir until it is as gone as possible. It's going to be a really weird mixture. It's not going to come together as a nice dough or anything. It's going to be really clumpy, but you want it, you want to stir it until you've got all of the sticky bits off the bottom and at least coated in tapioca. Again, this will take a little while. Once you've got everything as mixed up as you really can, you're going to pour this mixture of dough out on a clean working surface. So I just used the countertop. I washed it really well. Um, but if you would rather use a cutting board or something, that is totally okay. And you're going to let your mixture cool down a little bit so it is handleable. Once you get to a temperature that's not so hot you can't touch it, but also not cold yet, you're going to start kneading your dough. Now you want to make sure that you have clean hands for this, um, but you're basically just going to smush together these little kind of crumbly bits until they form one cohesive ball. It doesn't have to be smooth or anything. It's probably not going to be in my experience, but you at least want everything to clump up together. Now. 
if you're like me and your dough isn't quite right, you can add some cold water if it is too dry or if it is too wet and sticky, you can add some of that extra tapioca starch, but don't use all of it. You need a little bit for the end of this process. So you're just going to keep kneading and messing with the dough until it forms one solid ball. <laughs> Once your dough is in kind of one solid form, we're actually going to cut it into quarters to make it easier to work with. This amount of dough will make a huge number of boba if you are interested. So while we're rolling it out, we really only want one small section. Now, if your dough came together really well, theoretically, you can roll it into a snake on a clean cutting board or surface. I should probably wipe this down again. But my dough never really gets to the point where I can actually roll it out. So I usually just pinch off little bits and roll those into my individual tapioca pearls. So here is my first little test pearl, but before I start rolling a bunch of tiny things, I want to make sure it fits through my straw and it is definitely too big. Now these uh, tapioca pearls or boba will expand when they get cooked. So you really want to make sure they absolutely go through the straw, even when they're dry. And they probably should be small enough to go through way easily. Like this is a good size for me. So make them smaller than you think you really should. It also helps when you're cooking them later to make sure everything cooks evenly. So now you're just gonna roll tapioca pearls for basically an eternity. It takes a long time to roll these out. This is kind of a good group project if everyone has clean hands and feels confident with each other touching their soon to be boiled foods. So I'll keep rolling and we'll come back in a few minutes with some movie magic. <laughs> movie magic. All right, this is about one quarter's worth of my tapioca dough rolled into bubbles. Now, before I go on and show you another option, we are going to add some tapioca to these pearls and kind of stir them around so everything gets coated. This makes sure that when they get cooked, they don't stick together badly. Um, it also helps when you're storing them. So you can keep rolling these for eternity. It will take a long time, but that's okay. Um, you can always wet your fingers. If you're having trouble rolling them, if they get dried out a little bit, you can wet your fingers a little bit and start again. It helps create balls again once the dough is more dry. But if this is taking forever and you don't want to deal with it, another option instead of rolling little pearls is to actually cut your dough into small squares. Now you want to make sure your squares are pretty tiny, but really once they've been boiled, the difference is not super dramatic in like color and size and obviousness. Uh, it's pretty hard to tell, especially because they get a little gummy on the outside. So squares is totally an option. You just need to cut everything carefully and make sure every all of your little bits are still quite small because again your dough will expand when it is cooked so i'll add these squares to the rest of my bubbles and make sure they're coated with tapioca and then do some more cutting and we will do some more movie magic so to cook our bubbles, we are going to put our clean pot back on the stove, back on the heat, and we're gonna add about six cups of water to the pot. And then we're gonna bring that water up to a full rolling boil. Once the water is really boiling, we're going to pour in our tapioca pearls that have been coated in tapioca starch to make sure they don't stick. Now you're gonna to wanna to stir these to also make sure they don't stick. But once the water gets really back up to full boiling, it'll kind of bounce them apart from each other. And you are going to turn down the heat a little bit on your stove. This heating element is not very strong, so I only turned it down for a little while. And let your tapioca pearls or boba simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. 
depending on how big they are. If you made them any bigger than these, you definitely want to go 20 minutes or maybe a little bit longer. Once your timer has gone off, you're going to turn off the heat and take your pot off of the heating element, set it somewhere safe where it's not going to burn a table, and you're going to put the lid on this pot and let your tapioca pearls sit and continue cooking for another 15 minutes undisturbed. Don't take the lid off. Don't poke at them. So it's 15 minutes later, so now we are going to take the lid off and poke at them and take a look at what we've got going so far. So you can see that they are already much lighter than traditional store-bought tapioca generally is, or bubble tea shop bought tapioca. But you're going to want to peek at them and make sure they're not too giant and chunky and white in the middle. Now there is a possibility if you've undercooked them that they're going to be kind of chalky in the center, but if they're smaller, it shouldn't be a problem. So we are going to put the lid back on because it's got a straining option and strain out all of the liquid in this pot and then give our bubbles a good rinse in cold water. Once your boba has been rinsed, you're going to add in the last of that brown sugar and stir gently. And at this point, your boba is done. You can ladle it into a bowl or container and let it cool down to room temperature and go ahead and use it. Or you can put it into a container with a lid and stick it in the fridge overnight. Now, you don't want to make too much extra because it doesn't really keep super well after a day, honestly. But you can freeze the uncooked boba pearls if you would like. And now we're on to making our actual boba tea. So we're gonna follow the directions on our tea packet, which in this situation means getting eight ounces of liquid. I used hot milk here and adding our tea powder mix to that and stirring it really well. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some ice to make sure that our boba tea is iced as it generally is served. And then we're gonna add in as much of our cooked boba tapioca pearls as you would like personally in your individual drink. You can fill it all the way up if that's what you'd prefer. And we'll top it off with our extra large straw. And that is your DIY boba tea. Hooray! Thanks so much for watching. Bye!